Welcome to the Divine Purpose Podcast, where we transport you along one of the more dynamic journeys of life. Have you ever been curious to know what it takes to become a successful leader? Or about knowing the secrets of life through the Bible? How about engaging in conversation where no topics are off limits? We will take you to new levels with guests who can help you grasp the importance of your calling. Now, here's your host, Eddie Dacius, founder of Dacius Facilities Management. So, and then I think I have this picture of you. Yep, that's him right there. That's the family. Wow. That's a beautiful family. Beautiful family. But um, Thank so you. let's let's go back to when you said that you choose Haiti because you love the people over there. Can you touch more on that? Yeah, I... Um I do love the people and I think uh, obviously I think I would say I love them more now than ever after living there 12 years uh, going on 13 years just because my kids call themselves Haitians I mean like we, we, we've been ingrained to that culture and lived there for 12 and a half years but but what I saw when I was over there is basically I think what drove me to that is I saw a bunch of me uh, a bunch of Mark Stockman's over there you might say um, passionate people gifted with a heart to do something, but they didn't have the training or the opportunity. So I was like, what if I could go over there and and give them that chance? And so that's what our mission's focused on really is, uh, I, I'm not looking for A players. I'm looking for B, C, and D players. And then I wanna empower them, I wanna educate them, I wanna equip them, and I wanna train them to become A and Bs. You get what I'm saying? Like, I wanna take what Jesus did, and he took 12 ordinary men, the disciples, and when they were being uh, persecuted and questioned, right, it says that in Acts 4 that they were uneducated and untrained, but they could tell they had spent time with Jesus. So I was like, what if I could do the same thing and just take these people who are so gifted, so talented, so passionate, and give them that shot at life to do what is it you want to do you want to be a doctor you want to be a pastor you want to be a lawyer you want to be a carpenter you want to be a nurse a teacher well let me help you do that and while you're going to school to to pursue your dream well we'll disciple you and, and the biblical um things we're, we're gonna teach you uh talk to you about and do marriage counseling we're gonna do money management right we're gonna teach you a skill and a trade we want to we want to help them not only the business uh, side but we want to help them spiritually and so i think just the Haitian people are just some of the greatest people in the world and some of the greatest people I know. And I, I just think that's kind of what drove me to it is just their their kindness. But uh, the fact that they, they didn't have the same opportunity that we had in America to just go get a job or say, hey, I'm dreaming about this or I want to go do this. I did said, hey, I want to be a professional golfer. I want to go and do this. And you could pursue that. Um, but um, yeah, I just wanted to go and help bring joy and bring other people's dreams to life with the help so, of the lord no definitely um what, what did you what do you like personally in haiti like from jeremy did you have a chance to go elsewhere like port au prince uh lakai oh i'm in lakai i'm in lakai every i'm in lakai every week um i go to port probably a couple times a month um so i don't do ministry there but i have a lot of friends and stuff from traveling in and out and bunch of the customs guys are good friends but no i don't do like ministry there we're focused on jeremy and and the surrounding area but how can you describe jeremy for for the listeners like people who never had the chance to go to haiti or never heard about haiti so what would be a description of the of jeremy uh just beautiful small town uh, just i guess it's the difference between living in small town iowa or la in other words port-au-prince is kind of like that la feeling you know that miami feeling right wow. just the big chaotic but the um the, the feeling of jeremy very hilly very agriculture uh, everybody's smiling and waving at you the, they, they don't like the crime or the violence they're um they're just the sweetest people it's just a it's a feeling of just family you know everybody knows everybody and when there's visitors or um you might say some rough people that come from other cities to to hang out or do bad things it's amazing how they 
um, they get they get pretty much run out of the city because they're like, we're, we're not okay with that. This is a this is a very family oriented city, and um, it's just it's such a great place. It's the one place in Haiti that I just let my kids my, my kids just go everywhere. Um, they ride their bikes downtown. They'll go hang spend all. I won't see them all day, you know. And I don't know how old you are Eddie, or what it was like growing up. But in the eighties and nineties, that's how we were raised. We just mom and dad said, come home at six, you know. And that's kind of the way I am. Hey man, everybody knows my family, and everybody's looking out for each other. And so I just let my kids you know run with all the haitian boys and girls and, and enjoy life and uh that's that kind of city where you know in port-au-prince obviously or lakai you just can't you, can, you can't do that for for many reasons you know what's what's your favorite food uh, my favorite food there is probably the um diria cloth sauce vian, the the beans and rice with the with the uh um, it's like a stew sauce like a red sauce with the meat carrots and uh, potatoes and the second is probably diri blanc the legume the the white rice with the legume the vegetables um, i love that so so much man it tastes so good so i get a lot of energy protein from that and vitamins so those are my two favorite two favorite meals the legume is like, for me it's the best meal ever yeah uh, at the end of the day you still have fish you still have goat you still have oh yeah you still have chicken you know yeah it's everything but um so what's your favorite food over there my favorite fruit yeah, mango. Uh, oh mango uh anana the the pineapple the the mangoes and pineapples in haiti they will put every mango and pineapple to shame in america i mean you if you say oh i love pineapple if you've never had a haitian pineapple then you don't know what you're missing i mean like you it, it's, it's a totally different flavor it is so amazing and the oranges oh my goodness they're not orange they're green over there of course but um oh my goodness the yeah the oranges are probably i guess oranges are probably my favorite there's nothing better than fresh squeezed orange juice in in, in haiti and uh, i think the the fact that everything's natural there even the the beef you know being grass-fed and uh, you don't have all the steroids and stuff Obviously, it can be a little tougher but you cook it uh, long enough it's very tender but um i love just the fact that everything's so organic and uh and healthy and good for you but uh yeah i'd say oranges pineapples mangoes they're 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 amazing over there so um i know haitian has a culture where morning they they drink coffee they talk so what's your morning like when you get when you eat? oh i i typically for me i typically have a couple eggs uh banana um you know, with my coffee, uh, the Haitians typically, it's like having a piece of bread, banana, a little coffee. Uh, then they usually have, you know, a much bigger, uh, they have more of a snack in, in the morning, I guess you would say. And then they usually have a ginormous kind of early afternoon meal. So sometimes the Haitians are only eating one big meal with, you know, maybe a little snack for breakfast and possibly a little uh, evening snack. But uh, yeah, for me and my team that work, uh, the Haitians that work for Haiti Ball Mission, if they're living at their place, they'll they'll have coffee and a little breakfast. But if they come up to our place, we we usually have something for them, whether it's spaghetti, you know, the breakfast spaghetti with the onions, peppers, and hot dogs, or uh, uh, yeah, just having bread and banana and coffee. But we're making sure we're giving them something. But yeah, typically, especially even the country, they they'll just eat a piece of bread and a piece of fruit, and that's and that's it. So, do you eat pate or fritai? Oh, pati, we oui, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's. I, I do eat pati. I try not to eat too much of it because it's it's good, but it's fried dough with. It's like a. It's like an amazing hot pocket, man. It's uh, fried dough with vegetables and meat inside. And uh, some of the ladies in town, I love it because they'll they, you know they'll put that egg inside there, and uh, you bite into that that fried dough and nice and warm, and you got vegetables and meat and uh, an egg. It's really good. So. Good stuff. Good stuff. So let's let's go to. So, what did you guys do first? What you guys so, how long have you been there? We've been there, uh, yeah, going on 12 and a half. We're 12 and a half years right now. Um, and so, what, what we're trying to accomplish is just give give as many leaders as I can, young men and women, a chance. So, what I try to focus on, me and my team in Haiti, is to find young men and women, um, usually in that high, late high school, teenage years. Um, we try to single out those just because we see that that's where the the change in passion is coming from it's very hard to change anybody over 40 but uh, we've also we found that uh, anybody from 15 to 25 in that range is is very impressionable still and they want to see haiti change they're not happy with 
just the, the, the poverty and the way it's been. And so we want to give them the, the, the training, the education, the empowerment that, uh, that they can, once they get established, they're able to then help others. And so our whole goal is empowering leaders to transform communities. We want to see communities transformed and changed for the gospel, but also economically. And so if you think about it, I'll just use one story. Pastor Elda, he's on our staff. He our, our, was our first guy to ever come through our, our leadership training program. Um, he got married. He got a loan from the bank to, to buy land. So the bank made some money. He used that money to buy materials. So the guy selling materials in town in Jeremy made money. He paid all the local workers to come and help build his house. So all the local workers made money. You see how just one, one couple that gets married and starts a family, right? Creates a, a sustainable, uh, keeps that money flowing in that circle, right? Uh, for just the economy. Now he's got three kids, one on the way. Uh, he's got uh, two side businesses. He does welding and concrete block. He's got people working for him. He's led several of his neighbors to, to Christ. Uh, and several of them come to church. Um, and so that's just one story. But I've probably got 40 stories of that happening where we help a couple graduate, get through the, the, the program, get their degree, whatever it is they want to do, get, get married, get a house, start a family. And that ripple effect, right, when you have marriages and families starting in the community that are on fire for God, but also see that you can make a difference if you work hard, right, that, that you can dream, that you can help change and break that cycle of just living in poverty and uh, just saying, well, there's nothing I can do. I'll just live with my girlfriend or boyfriend and I guess I'll just beg where, where they're actually changing that saying, hey, look, I started a business, right? Like I've, I've gotten married and I've taken a loan out and I'm paying that every month. And so we just want to continually see, uh, there's a picture right there, Eldon and his wife, Wozlu, and, and their three kids. And um, and that's just one example. And I have so many, but that's what we want to keep seeing is more. And that's Elda. If you talk to Elda, that's his passion and desires. He goes, God gave me a chance. He goes, Haiti Bible Mission gave me a chance to live out my calling and dream. And he goes, now I have a family. I have a house. I have I have employees that work for me. And he goes, I, I, he goes when I was young, I never thought that that was possible. So he sees the benefit of what, it, what God and HBM has done for him. He wants to take that then to as many young men and women as he can as well. And we're actually hoping in the next three years of funding's there. We want to just take the Haiti Bible Mission campus like we have now and just launch another one uh, two hours away. It's further out in the country. It, it, it's going to be a challenge, but because there's probably a lot of men and women out there in the country that if they had a shot at dreaming and saying, man, this is what I want to do. You know what I mean? Maybe it's a future president, a future doctor, a few, like I said, a future carpenter that's very skilled. But unless someone gets out there and gives him that chance or her that shot, the reality of it is a lot of those Haitians will just fall back into uh, the statistics of making an average of three dollars, four dollars U.S. a day. And, and what are you going to do with that, right? You'll never get married. You'll never have your business. But we want to we want to help these men and women fulfill their dreams. Like Esther's one. Uh, I think she's, what is she, 19 years old now? She's in her program. She wants to become uh, an engineer. Well, that's great. I, I want to help you become an engineer. And I want you to be as successful as you can. But I also want you to to love Jesus and be a, be a salt and light and witness, right? In your workplace, in your community where you live. Uh, get married. We want to help that, you know. Successful families that love Jesus, the ripple effect, they can change a lot of lives. What comes before making a smart decision? Choices. A smart choice is the best option, which is who we are. That's why our clients expect more from us and, in return, get more in everything we do. We understand the problem. That's why we thrive for excellence. We don't just create a winning culture. We aspire to be a smart choice, a voice for solutions. We believe in integrity, professionalism, and teamwork. Our passion is to bring results from our clients by working harder, smarter, and faster. As a team, we always deliver because we recognize your needs. Choosing smart influences us to be the best version of ourselves. That makes us different than other companies. It makes us confident in achieving our goals. It makes us who we are, and it makes us DFM the smart choice.